As we continue our discussion on functional groups, we want to go on to functional group number five. And functional group number five is a very simple one, very easy to remember. It's called self-hydral group. Self-hydral. So it's a self-hydral group. It's usually just denoted as SH. And two basic things you want to remember, self-hydral groups are most often seen in proteins. And in addition to that, they are often called thiol groups. So we'll put that in quotes, thiol. Thiol groups. That's all we need to know about sulfhydro groups. Very easy. Um, the next one, number six, is going to be a very important one, especially later on when we look at uh, different biological molecules. The next one is a phosphate group. So we'll write phosphate. And there are different types of phosphate groups, but the best way to denote this, I think, is to write H2PO4. That's a phosphate group. Um, this is a good way to describe it because it covers the definition. The definition in and of itself states one or two acidic protons are donated in this situation. And if you haven't noticed, when you think of an acid, you always think of a proton donor. When you think of a base, you always think of a proton acceptor. So one or two acidic protons uh, are donated in this situation, in the phosphate situation. How many protons do I have in my example? If we go back, we see H2. Now, that's two protons, H1 and H2. You can also write HPO4, but I wrote H2PO4 because it covers both possibilities. Because of this situation, we can now consider a phosphate uh, group either basic or acidic, of course, it's going to be acidic, and because it's acidic and it has this ability to donate protons, I'm going to consider it polar. Oops, let's write down polar. And in addition to that, because it's polar, it's obviously going to be hydrophilic. Hydrophilic. And so, when do we see phosphate groups? When will we see them? These are seen in biology, specifically in two main areas. During, when, during our discussion on phospholipids, we will see phosphate groups in great detail. Their structure, their function, really helps out their ability to be phospholipids. And we'll see why in future videos, and also in nucleic acids. Again, later on, we'll see that in much greater detail. Just two places where we see phosphate groups a lot. And our final functional group is number seven. This one is known as a methyl group. Very simple. Uh, it's denoted by CH3. This is a methyl group. Uh, this is going to be polar or nonpolar. What do you think? Do you notice an extremely electronegative atom here? Because I don't. I see CNH. And if I remember from our carbon skeleton video, C and H have a pretty similar electronegativity. So would I even consider this a polar bond between C and H? No. These are connected via nonpolar covalent bonds. So these are nonpolar. Methyl groups are nonpolar. And because they're nonpolar, do you expect them to dissolve or like to be in polar water? Of course not. These are going to be hydrophobic. So. As we wrap up this functional groups video, one overarching theme I want you to think about, the question that I have for you is, what do you notice about all of the polar functional groups? We can see that this is a polar functional group. This one is also polar. This one is also polar. Amino group, polar. Phosphate group, polar. Sulfhydryl, we don't have to really worry about that. Methyl group is definitely nonpolar. What do we notice? If you think very carefully, you notice that of course there's hydrophilicity. All of the polar groups are hydrophilic. Hydrophilic, 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 hydrophilic. We see hydrophilic everywhere there's polar. But more importantly, something that I've been trying to drive home is that I want you to notice that we have this emergent property showing up. The fact that each of these polar groups have an electronegative atom within them. Most of the time, that EN atom that we notice is which one? Oxygen, oxygen, oxygen. Over here is a little bit different. In the amino group, don't get me wrong, this is not oxygen. This is, of course, NH2, so this is a nitrogen. 
Nitrogen is also around here on the periodic table, so it's still considered a pretty big difference between N and H in terms of the polarity, in terms of the electronegativity, excuse me. So that's the thing I want you to notice, that whenever you see oxygen, whenever you see nitrogen, you're going to be expecting that group to be polar, and you're going to thus also be expecting that group to be hydrophilic, because polar likes polar. Polar likes to dissolve in polar. So this is our discussion on functional groups. These functional groups are necessary because they help us understand how these organic chemistry molecules function. We get to see that because there's an O in the structure, the function is going to be denoted by polar, and it's also going to be denoted by hydrophilic. And these are themes that you're going to start seeing in the rest of our biological molecules discussion.